Apparently it was spooky season this month uh, because I have another horror book. What is her name? Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my September wrap up for 2023. I read a total of 12 books this month so I will be splitting this up into two parts, six books each. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I have is My Dearest Darkest. This is by Kayla Cottingham and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After a car accident that killed both of her parents, Finch Chamberlain has been feeling a little bit different. She is entering her first year at Ulaloom Academy which is a prestigious boarding school on the island of Rainwater. There she meets popular girl Serena St. Clair who seems to be instantly drawn to her. They unknowingly summon a greater god named Neurosi who starts to ask them for little bits of themselves in exchange for granting their wishes. As time goes on, Neurosi's demands become bigger and the girls must figure out how to stop her before it's too late. The one thing I will say about this book is that you can definitely tell that it is a debut novel. I do think that it was a lot of fun while I was reading it and I think that the ending was the strongest aspect of the book. I think it wrapped up really nicely but the mystery element surrounding the five missing students was a little bit weak in my opinion but I still like I said had a really fun time reading it. This is marketed as being a horror, which I wouldn't say I particularly agree with. I don't think it was really scary at all. It was more so gory. I really liked the boarding school setting. I think the Dark Academia vibes was really well done. There's also a really sweet sapphic romance in this, which I really enjoyed. I think that the two girls were so polar opposite that they really complemented each other. I think Serena was a very interesting character. I really liked her character development in this. She went from being very, very closed off, almost angry, to being somebody who cared about people very, very much. I think Finch was also a really great character. I liked how she was questioning her sexuality and how that provided a lot of really great conversation surrounding that. Overall, I enjoyed this for what it was. I will probably check out more from this author. I think that it was a fun book and I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was Red Team Blues by Cory Doctorow. I really did not enjoy this that much. I give it a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows 67 year old Martin Hench who is a forensic accountant. He takes a job from an old friend who scores him big money and so he decides that he's going to retire but then he begins being hunted by some very wealthy people and it's kind of the story of that. I found this book to be so incredibly boring. I did read it in one setting because it's very short but I can't say I had a good time. I could not care less about what happened to Marty or anybody in this story which made it very hard to want to continue reading. There was just a lot of unnecessary descriptions about the food and the alcohol and the expensive things that Marty was buying with all his money because he's so wealthy and it just got old very quickly. I clearly was not the target audience so I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars and I will be getting rid of it very soon. The next book I have is Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 20 year old Rose Darling. She is a member of an ultra religious group called Kingdom of the Pine in Montana. She has been noticing that she's having some funny feelings about a female friend and when her parents ask her about the possibility of starting a relationship with a boy, some very spooky things start happening to her. She begins seeing a demon following her and she starts coughing up these little black insects. She then starts hearing whispers around town about Camp Damascus, which is a gay conversion camp that her church hosts with a 100% success rate. So I'm not religious in any way, so I usually don't vibe with heavily religion-based books, but I was hooked with this right from the beginning. I do think that it lags a bit in the middle but I cared enough to want to continue reading and find out what was going to happen next. I really liked Rose as a main character. She is autistic and has very deep beliefs rooted in her religion but she begins questioning her religion and starts asking some very important questions and I just think that she was really well written. I could not help but start rooting for her. I do think that the other characters, aside from Sol, who is one of her friends from the camp, felt a bit flat and underdeveloped compared to Rose, but I do think that they helped push the story along, so there clearly was a purpose for them in the book. I really liked how this talked about the darker parts of Christianity, but it also spoke to the fact that people can find great comfort within the religion. The biggest complaint that I probably have for this book is that I wish that we spent more time in the actual camp. It just took a little bit of time to get there as the majority of the book takes place 
place in the town. Overall, I had a really great time reading this, but I definitely think that you need to be aware of any triggers that might pop up into this before you pick it up, but I really liked it. Four out of five stars. Apparently it was spooky season this month uh, because I have another horror book and it is The Haunted by Danielle Vega. I gave this a four out of five stars as well. After a bit of a tough year at her old school and an abusive boyfriend, Hendrix, Becker, O'Malley, and her family move into an old house called Steel House, which has a bit of a reputation in their town, which Hendrix actually learns about on her first day of school. She is taken under the wing of the popular crowd, and as she spends more time in her house, she starts to realize that there is an evil lurking within. She decides to team up with her broody neighbor in order to banish the spirits of the house, and it's kind of the story of that. So I really enjoyed Merciless by this author, except for the fourth book. It just kind of got repetitive. So I was excited to check out another like horror-esque book by her. I thought this was so much fun. I've always loved Danielle Vega's writing and this did not disappoint. The book is very fast paced. I read it in one sitting. It is pretty short, but I had so much fun while reading it. I do think that it would make a great October spooky read. I really enjoyed all of the characters. I loved getting to know them more. I liked the kind of like mystery element of the ex-boyfriend in this and why Hendrix was so gung-ho on keeping whatever happened to her a secret. The biggest gripe I probably have for this book is is the insta-love. These two characters hang out maybe, maybe three times and then suddenly they are head over heels for one another. I just didn't buy it. We are left off on a big cliffhanger as well and I actually do own the second book now so I'm probably gonna be picking it up in October because I want to know what that cliffhanger is all about, but I really like this four out of five stars. Definitely a perfect October read, even though I read it a month early. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Last Girl Standing by Jennifer Dugan. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of five stars. So this follows Sloan and Cherry, who are the sole survivors of a massacre that occurred at the summer camp they were working at, where all of their other fellow counselors were slaughtered. Now, months later, these two are inseparable after bonding over their shared trauma. Sloan can't remember much from the tragedy, but Cherry is there to fill in the gaps. When new evidence starts to come up, Sloan starts to think that maybe Cherry was involved in the murders because the story that she is being told doesn't quite add up, so it's kind of the story of that. So cults are one of my buzzwords, so I was very excited about this book. It was a very fast read that I ended up finishing in one sitting. I enjoyed this for what it was. I do think that it was a fun thriller, but I do think that it was rather predictable. But it did keep me interested enough to want to keep reading to find out what happened in the end. Although I must say that I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending, I think that it was just very abrupt and I kind of wish that there had been more of an epilogue so that we could kind of see where the story went from there. I also just really didn't like Cherry and Sloane together. I just thought that it was very toxic and manipulative and I don't know if that was the point and that we were supposed to like them, but I, I just didn't know if I was supposed to root for them or not, but I, I definitely did not root for them. I wanted them so far away from each other. But overall, it was enjoyable. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for part one of the wrap-up is The Nanny by Gilly McMillan. I gave this a three out of five stars. In 1988, seven-year-old Hannah was devastated when her nanny Hannah left without saying goodbye. Her mother Virginia told her that Hannah left because she was such a bad child, which made her grow very angry and distant toward her mother. But when Jocelyn loses her husband in a car crash, she is forced to move back into her childhood home. When a human skull is discovered on the grounds, Jocelyn immediately thinks that it must be Hannah, but then, 30 years later, Hannah unexpectedly shows up on the doorstep and agrees to help Jocelyn with her own child, Ruby. That makes Jocelyn think that there may be more to Hannah's disappearance than what she was told, and it's kind of the story of that. I found this to be an okay thriller. I found it very slow, and I kind of found myself daydreaming while reading it. I just felt that it was a little bit too long for the story that was being told. I think that it definitely could have been cut down and still got the same points across. The story is told an alternating point of view between Jocelyn, her mom, Virginia, and then a couple of chapters from this random detective sprinkled throughout. 
I think that the most interesting part of this book was the troubled relationship between Jocelyn and Virginia because it definitely plays a big role into the relationship between Jocelyn and her own daughter Ruby. I just think that there was a lot of miscommunication in this that definitely could have been solved if either one of Jocelyn or Virginia just actually talked to each other about the issues that they had, but I digress. Like I said, it was an okay thriller. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first six books that I read for September 2023. The next six books will be up on my channel at some point, so let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!